Today is a really exciting day. It is a no excuse day. It's really cool and it's all about weaving. Today we're going to be looking at how to make our own yarn, how to use anything that you can find anywhere in your home or maybe outside of your home, and how to dye t-shirts. So with weaving, you need just super basic supplies, something malleable that you can string through strings. You are going to need something to make a warp. A warp is what you weave onto, and you're going to need something called a weft. A weft is like this yarn, um, this plastic material. I used t-shirts. I used um, just some grass, and we're going to be making that onto a loom. Now you are going to need either a piece of cardboard, cardstock, something kind of hard that you can cut slits into, but there are some really easy ways to make a really cool wall tapestry. I'm gonna first show you how to make a cute little one. I really like how um, textured and cool this came out. And eventually you're just gonna see a time-lapse video of me making this huge wall tapestry behind me. Um, so go and get a piece of cardboard, maybe some cardstock, and go outside, maybe get some grass, get an old t-shirt, and even some onion skins. Just wait, it's a little weird. And start weaving. Okay guys, it's gonna come out really cool, I promise. When you're weaving, you obviously need something to weave with. We need something to be a weft. The weft is what you weave into your loom and your work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make yarn out of this old t-shirt. This is just an old t-shirt. It has some graphic design that I don't like and it's just a little bit too small for me now. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to make sure that my t-shirt lies completely flat and I'm just going to cut off this bottom hem. The hem is where a piece of fabric is rolled over and there's a stitch. I want to cut that off. I have to admit to you, this is one of the only shirts that I own that I am okay with cutting up. We are about to make t-shirt yarn. It's a really soft, comfortable yarn that you can use for um, like maybe a pillowcase or a blanket, whatever you're going to be making with your weaving. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I'm completely lining up both my seams on my t-shirt. My t-shirt, by the way, has a little bit of a graphic right here. It looks red. I am lining up my seams. This is also completely made out of cotton. So if you have a cotton t-shirt, it'll work great with this. I'm lining up my seams. Making sure that I don't have too many wrinkles. <laughs> well, making sure it's lined up. And now I'm just going to put a cutting mat underneath this and cut off this hem right here. You can do this with some fabric scissors. I have something called a rotary cutter as a blade right here. And I'm going to use a straight edge. So I'm just going to cut off that hem. Remember that hems are just fold over fabric that got stitched together. Okay, my hem is completely cut off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm making sure that my t-shirt is completely folded in half right here. What do you, what I meant by then, fold in half? It's just making sure that it's lined up completely symmetrically. So I am folding, making sure there are no bumps or lumps. It's a little easier when you have a bigger shirt and it's not fitted. This is a fitted t-shirt I got from Five Below a long time ago. Okay. Now this is the super important part, so listen up. You need to bring this side seam up, but not touching that side seam. Okay, do you see how there's a bit of a gap right there? You need that seam. 
You need that right there. Now all you're gonna do is take a straight edge. You are gonna cut through this, but you are not gonna cut through here. You're just gonna make strips all the way down to there. Let me show you. I am cutting through here. All the way, but I did not cut through that edge. Okay, I'm going to continue cutting all the way down until I get to the armpit part of my shirt. All right, this is my final cut right here. In my final cut, I'm going to finally just cut all the way off of the armpit. Okay, so I'm starting at the armpit and I'm cutting all my fabric off. And I'm gonna save this for later. Now what I'm going to do is unfold all my loops it's almost gonna look like a rib cage and then I'm gonna start to cut to make this one continuous string see how it looks right now it's all connected by right here I'm going to stick my hand through the middle of this almost rib cagey looking thing And this part is the part that's going to make it one continuous string. I'm going to take my fabric scissors and I'm going to cut from the outside to the in right here. At that diagonal part. And again, I'm going to take my scissors from this opening to that opening cutting that opening to this opening okay and then the final cut that opening to there now you have all of this fabric it is not done yet though to make it look nice and finished I wish you wanted to look like rags you're gonna take it and you're going to pull it so it actually looks like yarn. See that comparison? How different it looks? You're gonna go through the whole thing and it's gonna get a lot smaller. Oh. It actually makes a good amount of yarn, which is nice. Especially when we're gonna be weaving with it. All right, and that's how you make a bunch of t-shirt yarn. Okay, hear me out. You can also make yarn out of trash bags. Make sure you have a clean bag that you've completely cleaned. Just like the t-shirt, you have to cut off that bottom. You gotta fold all the way to the top. And then just like that t-shirt material, you want to cut, but not all the way to there. And then just continue all of the same steps, just like the t-shirt. While we're talking about different ways to make yarn, tissue paper is a nice and pliable surface that you could just cut big strips and weave through your loom. This one is very art teachery. It's very much the hippie in me, but you can also just go outside 
and get some grass. This is just a long piece of grass that I found and I found a whole bunch of it. So I'm gonna use that to probably weave a little bit too. So there's really no excuse if you have an old t-shirt, if you can go outside, if you had some leftover wrapping paper, as long as you can kind of bend it a little, you can weave with it. All right, now let's talk about how to make your loom. Let's say you don't have a paper bag, you don't have plastic bags, you don't have yarn, you don't have an extra t-shirt. I think we all got junk mail, right? You can use this for a little recycled yarn. What you've got to do first is you have to fold the corner as teeny tiny as possible and then just keep folding, keep folding, keep folding as neatly as you possibly can. Eventually, you'll have a pretty rigid string of paper that you can weave with. This is a really cool way to repurpose newspapers or anything. And it also comes out really cool because of the pattern of the paper. Now the more folding and the more rolling that you do, the tougher this is gonna be. So if you want it to be nice and bendy, roll a little less paper. Obviously the bigger the paper, the longer the string will be too. A lot of people make baskets out of these. Okay, so here's something that you can weave with. A little paper yarn. Now that I have this t-shirt yarn, what I was planning on doing was taking about half of it and I wanted to dye it a cool color. But I mean, obviously I don't have fabric dye. I don't have um, like tie dye, which kind of stinks. So that would be a fun thing to do right now. What I do have, however, is turmeric and I have a bunch of leftover onion skins. Now these do not smell bad, do not worry about it. They actually are completely scentless. What I'm gonna do, and I know it's gonna sound so bizarre, but I'm gonna make my own color out of this. Onion skins give like an orangey tinge, kind of like a yellow base to fabric, and you can even use it as paint if you wanted to. I know it's kind of funny. I'm gonna put a bunch of my onion skins on the bottom of this bowl. It actually looks kind of pretty. So this would be a yellow base. Then I'm gonna add some turmeric. You don't need this if you just want yellow fabric. You can just do this. Turmeric will be kind of an orange tinge. And then to this, I'm going to add some boiling water. Enough to cover my fabric once I add it in. You can even see that the water itself is like a yellow color. Now obviously this is super, super hot, so be very careful. Then I'm going to add in my cotton, do something to press it all down. This is not gonna stain it for forever. So if you want to wash your fabric, maybe think of a more permanent dye, but I'm just gonna be making a beautiful wall hanging that I probably will never wash. So I'm gonna let this chill in here for a few hours, then wring it out, let it dry, and then I'm gonna start making my wall hanging. Again, it doesn't smell bad. It actually smells kind of good because the turmeric is nicely scented. I'm going to let this hang out and I'm going to go and make different versions of my yarn. While we wait for that to completely die, I have a whole bunch of different types of yarn. 
If you guys didn't know, yarn is just normally either acrylic or polyester or wool, all woven into one big string. But if you want different textures, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna unravel all these strings to make a more puffy texture. This also gives you more more yarn to work with. So I'm gonna continue to undo all these things. Um, I'm gonna see if I can make this a different texture. I'm gonna make this puffy by brushing it, almost like you would brush your hair. I have my cat's brush, but you can use your own brush. And I'm just going to make it nice and fluffy with this brush. See, if you compare the two, it's a little teeny bit fluffier. Also, if you have a little bit bigger of yarn, if you start to unravel it, it starts to get poofy like a cloud. And that's what I'm really excited about. Here is all the yarn I'm gonna use, plus our t-shirt yarn. All right, so let's figure out how to make a loom. With my loom, I've decided just to use a piece of cardboard. This piece of cardboard, my cat got to it. Hilarious. You want to make sure that you are making lines that are about um, the same distance from each other. I'm just going to be making little cuts. And I want to make the same amount of cuts. One, two, and two. One, two, one. Now I want to make the same cuts over here. Because when I'm stringing this, I want to have nice straight lines. Lining up with my scissors. Now I have my loom. Now when you're stringing your loom, you can use whatever you want. Do you have wire that you can string? Do you have dental floss? You can use dental floss. Um, I'm just going to be using some extra yarn that I have, but again, you do not need just regular yarn. To start stringing your loom, you're going to put your piece of string behind your loom and through this little hole. Then you're going to go down to the next hole right here and around that tab. Again, go up and around the tab, down and around the tab. You want it to be pretty nice and tight with really nice straight lines. Now what I would do is that if you are going to be hanging this, think about what you want to hang it with. Do you have a piece of um, like a stick to hang it? Do you want to put on a popsicle stick? Do you want to just be able to cut it off? I want to just be able to cut it off. So I'm just going to leave it like this. But this is how you make your loom. Now let's talk about your warp. Your warp strings are right here. These are your warp. You weave in and out of your warp. I'm gonna start with just plain old string and I'm gonna show you the basic weaving stitch. So with this string right here, I'm gonna use a lot of it. So I'm gonna use my wing band, and I'm gonna cut it. Now I'm gonna use a lot of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it on my thumb, wrap it around my thumb, around my pinky. Thumb, pinky, thumb, pinky, thumb, pinky. And it's making a little eight design right there. Now, the most important thing you need to remember is under, over, under, over. What I mean by that is you see this big clump of yarn. I'm gonna go under this warp, over this next string, 
under the next one, over this one, under that one, over that one, under. I'm going to pull it until there's a little tail right here. And then I'm just going to clump it all down. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now I finished under that warp. I'm going to wrap it around and go under this next warp string. Under, over, under, over, under, over, collapse that down. This is super basic. I'm gonna wrap around, under, over. This is the basic weaving pattern. If you want to do this the entire time, it is so nice and relaxing. Weave around, under the next one. Now this is fun, but we're making a really cool big tapestry. So I wanna show you a few more ways to add a little bit of texture to your weaving. All right, so let's say you wanna add tassels just to give it a little bit of texture. Take whatever string you got, it could be that um, t-shirt string could be some grass whatever you have that's pliable take a whole bunch of that string double it up so put your ends to your ends it's doubled gonna double up twice three times you basically just want to make a bunch of the same length strings. So I do that thing? No, I just have to cut it one more time. Oops. So you just want a bunch of little strings. Grab four of those strings. You are going to go under two of your warp strings. Oh, by the way, I continue to weave this. I'm just gonna leave this guy right over here. He won't come undone, don't worry about him. Then you are going to go through the middle here, through the bottom here and pull tight and pull down. Let's do that again. Grab four of these, line them all up. Grab two warp strings. They go up through the middle. All of those strings go under there. You pull and go down. So yeah, you're gonna have like those really, really cute little tassels. Let me continue going all the way over. Okay, so now that I did all that fancy work with all this texture, it looks beautiful. It looks a little, a little messy there. I think I, this is just a little loose. Now, I want to add in that natural grass. I'm going to, again, just do a really nice, simple over, under, over, under. With the natural stuff, I do suggest that you cut it and switch it. So you see how I finished under there? I'm going to go over here. really smush that down and cut it. Now I'm going to go under, over, under, over. That's just a really cool separation. I mean, a bunch of rugs are made out of grasses anyway. So I think this is going to be really, really pretty. I actually like that you can see my little warp strings too. 
All right. Now I'm gonna add even more texture. To make my loop, I'm going to go under with this string. I'm gonna pull through some of that extra. I'm gonna loop this twice. Go over that string. I'm actually gonna loop it three times. See these loops? And then go under my next one. Ooh, come on. Pull it nice and tight. Don't want to break my string though. Put my paintbrush a little bit toward my left. Loop it three times. One, two, three. Go under. Move my paintbrush to the left. Loop. One, two, three and then go under. Push, push, push. Leave that paintbrush right there. See how I went under the string? Now with the rest of my yarn, I'm gonna go over and just do a very basic weaving. Under, over, under, over. And again, this is just super fancy. You do not have to do this. Just, just add some texture. I'm gonna go around again, go around this one, over that one, under, over, under, over, under. Pull. Push that down. Maybe I'll do that one more time. Oh, so cute. Uh-oh, uh-oh. My loops are really big because I looped it around three times. If you don't want as big as loops, then just wrap around your paintbrush once or twice. Okay, actually I kind of like them. I think they're kind of cool. That's how you make a loop. I'm just gonna continue to weave this up and I'm going to show you kind of a chevron pattern right here. So you saw there that I just used some of that wet grass and I know it's just my sweet little hippie heart, but I really do love the look of it. I think it's so like natural and cool looking. But now we're going to do a little chevron technique. You're going to grab all of your yarn, again, put it on your thumb, twist around your thumb, then your pinky, your thumb, then your pinky. This just makes sure that there's no knots, no tangles in that figure eight. Then you're going to pass that figure eight through that right side. And you're going to wrap it around once. You can do the same thing, wrap around the next string, make sure you're pushing down, wrap around the next one. Remember we're moving right to left, wrapping, keeping it nice and tight. again. Oh. <laughs> ah. 
wrap nice and tight, pull the two ends, push down. Now we are gonna work from left to right. So we are going from right side to left, nope. All right, so now you're gonna go over this left hand and we're gonna go from left to right. So we are going to go left, under, under one more time. Pull tight. Left. <laughs> Wrap around that string. Pull tight. You can kind of see there's like an arrow happening. Left, wrap around the string, pull tight, wrap around the string, pull tight. We're technically going right, but I'm using my left hand a lot, so I'm saying left. <laughs> wrap around your string, pull tight, and then Wrap around your string. Pull tight. So these are really big loops. These are kind of teeny tiny loops. And then I think I'm gonna just weave these up and over again. And then hopefully I'll finish off with some tassels. And then we can finish this guy up. Okay, what I think I want to do is I want to add smaller loops, but this is nice and white, kind of like our pretty neutral palette except here. And then at the bottom, I'm going to be adding those tassels of yellow, which are coming out really good. So right now I just want to put just a regular weave into this. And then we're going to check out how to do that smaller loop that I was trying to do earlier. Let me do one more pass, so we're on the correct side. You don't have to do it from the right side, by the way, I just think it's easier. <laughs> okay. Oh, and I like that it has a little bit of red to match our red string up here. Okay, okay, okay. Now, you are going to go Under, wrap two, let's say once, over, under, wrap once, Oops. Over, under, Ooh. wrap once, over, under, oh, it came undone, I know it didn't. Okay, so we have three loops here, and now I'm going to push everything down, and then just do regular pass, and then we can take out our little loops. Ooh, I'm nervous! Okay, moment of truth. These are the loops. We have three little cute little loops. Yeah! See the little, the little mountains? Oh man, adorable little mountains, love it. Okay, so we have loops here, we have chevron here, we have big old loops here, we have tassels here. I think 
what I want to do is another tiny layer of this colorful yarn and then finally the tassels. Drum roll! Da, 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 da. Remember how these have been chilling here for hours? This is the turmeric and um, onion dyed yarn. It's honestly like so pretty. Now remember this yarn is not permanent. It would come out in the wash. So if you wanted to dye anything with this, it would not be waterproof. So maybe you figure out a different way to dye it. But this is what my tassels are going to be made out of. I'm going to go and dry these off, but I'm going to come back and use these for tassels. Okay. So I have my yarn that I continue to pull a whole, whole bunch just to make it nice and thin because this is a pretty small piece. So I'm thinking compositionally. I know I was really excited about tassels before, but I think I'm honestly just gonna finish off this weaving super simply. Cause if up here it's really nice, calm, and then starts to get exciting. And then at the end, there's this big voluminous um, bottom right down here. I think that would look really pretty. So with my homemade yarn that again, this is what happens with turmeric and onion skins. It's so cool. It can just be nice and yellow and just like plain up here. I think that's the best bet. So I'm just gonna weave this off and then I'll show you how to take it off the loom. All right, it's finally time to take this baby off the loom. What I'm gonna do is I have a roach rogue string right here. I'm just going to tie that onto my last warp string just so it doesn't move anywhere. It kind of secures everything underneath it. I'm just going to tie that off and I can always cut off the extra after I get it off my um, loom. I'm going to take a little piece of grass that I use right in here and I'm going to use this to actually hang my piece. So. I'm just gonna slide off, slide off this loop, put it through there, this loop, here, this loop, and I just have a string right here that if I wanted to, I could tied in my extra string just to make another loop. Or I could just cut it off. I kind of like it with three. It's kind of funky. All right, now I'm gonna take these parts off. Have these loops though. Oh, actually, I want to just tie this knot here just to make it a little extra secure. Come on, tiny knot. There we go, just to make sure that that rope stays where it's supposed to be. Now I have these three loops. I think what I want to do now is remember how I wanted all of this to go from really simple to really busy. I'm going to use just some extra of my onion, <laughs> not onion, extras of my um, t-shirt to make a few more tassels because I think that'd be cool. So I'm making a loop. The loop goes through the end loops. 
the end of my yellow yarn goes through here, almost like a lark knot for macrame. Oh my gosh, this is so funky looking. You can obviously make yours way more tame and way more sophisticated than this. But I like it. I think it's cute. All right, so now I'm going to go in. Obviously, craftsmanship is really important in art. So I'm just going to cut off any stray yarn. Cute, cute, cute. Oh my gosh. It's so adorable. So guys, that's how you make a little wall hanging. Oh, it's so cute. I could see this selling on Etsy for sure, especially with all the natural elements. I think that really makes it, makes it almost really classy and cool. Um, I made a larger one. I hopefully will finish that before I post this video, but I cannot wait to see what you guys create, especially with all the different ways that you can use different fabrics in a weaving like this. Um, remember, you can make loops, you can make tassels, you can just do basic stitches, a chevron pattern, um, smaller loops, bigger loops, and then you can finish it all off with your very own DIY yarn. Um, all right, so I have a lot of cleaning up to do, especially uh, hosing off these onion skins, but have a wonderful time and I can't wait to see what you guys create. So after waiting for the onion skins, after making our own yarn, after going outside, finding our own supplies, you have something really beautiful that was really meditative, really cool. If all you can do is that very simple stitch, maybe play around. Um, skip every other warp string. Maybe if you um, use thicker yarn, maybe if you use thicker parts of that t-shirt material. Maybe if you use um, bigger leaves, smaller leaves to weave into, you get a really cool texture. I really love how these came out. Believe it, probably believe it, honestly. Um, I had never done a big wall tapestry like this one. And I really love how it came out. I'm really excited. It's gonna go in my bedroom and it's gonna look really cool. I just keep fiddling with it. You can always move your strings. You can always pull them apart a little bit more. You can always add more tassels if you want. I'm a big fan of these tassels. But those are the basics to make your big wall hanging. Your only um, obstacle is where to find stuff to weave into this. And remember, you don't need really simple yarn. You can use anything in your house. Um, so with these techniques, I'm really excited to see what you guys are creating. All right, guys. Oh, it's, just, it's so cute. I think next week I'm going to make a teeny tiny art show, and it's going to be really funny, so look for that. But, man, this just came out really cool, and it's making my little hippie heart happy. This is also Earth Day, by the way, so happy Earth Day. And this is a great way to repurpose maybe natural fibers and repurpose maybe something you're not wearing. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna stop rambling. Um, yay, all right guys, well, happy creating.